welcome to this old new guitar. Anyway, welcome back. I wanted to give it uh, again another update on this uh, 19th century romantic guitar and all the uh, stuff that I've been doing to it. Um, I wanted to talk first about um, having to uh, sand everything, but I had to sand the sides and the back especially a lot um, because it was a, a minefield of divots. And I've gone into that in previous videos, how poorly it was done. And one of the problems I had was that the sides especially were thinner than the back. The back, I knew I could take out all the divots. Uh, the um, uh, there was enough. Uh, the back is quite thick, uh, solid um, solid maple or sycamore. But there's enough to I was able to to sand them down, and uh, then but the sides were quite a bit thinner, and a little over two millimeters. Some of the maybe two point five millimeters, but some of the I had a question, especially on the sides. There was a few spots. So what I had to do, um, and I, this is um, a tool that my friend uh, Bill loaned me. Uh, Bill's been great. He, he's, uh, I have many things. Uh, he'll come up, of course, many times. But he loaned me uh, what we call a Hacklinger gauge. And the Hacklinger gauge is a, a plunge, uh, not a plunger, but a pull, a spring pull uh, with a magnet. And what you do, is you put the uh, little uh, uh, little reader or the little device, and you attach it to the um, to your uh, Hacklinger gauge. And the gauge, you just move it around. And so what I had to do is move it around to the sides, all over the sides. And then what you do is you you pull it, and when you hear a click. That tells you how um, how thick it is because there's uh, in millimeters there's readings on on this. So I don't know if you can hear it. Okay, that just went. Okay. Anyway, so um, so I had to use the hackling gauge, especially on the sides, to verify the thicknesses. And good news, I was able to sand it all out. And still, there was enough thickness on the sides that they're they're doing fine. It's it'll be fine. So anyway, the Hacklinger gauge, a great tool for getting in uh, tops and backs and sides of a guitar um, to get an accurate reading. And uh, a nice device. You have to handle it careful carefully. Um, uh, so you don't want to drop it. Anyway, thank you, Bill, for that. Um, it's a useful, useful tool, and uh, it's a nice loan. Second thing is that I uh, sanded everything down, and it left the sycamore and the uh, of the y, uh, the sides in the in the top, or excuse me, the sides in the back, really white. And so what I what I did was I I, di I dyed the sides in the back with um, an aniline dye. And then carefully uh, added up layers of of, of a water-based poly, and um, the death wall water-based poly I, I like it. It kind of matches some of the nice uh, acoustic guitar uh, or uh, instrument poly, well, water-based polys that I've used in the past. And so I'm I'm uh, I like it. I, although I love lacquer, I love the um, the uh, Nitrocellus lacquer is a great finish, but you know the smell. Anyone who's used it, it, it it's it, you know it's it's quite annoying and it's it's not good for you. So I've I've gone to water base for the back and sides, but for the top, I've decided since it's a French guitar that I would um, uh, do a French polish. <laughs> And I know it's a little corny. Um, so I'm French polishing this, and it, I'm struggling a little bit with it. it although it lo it's looking pretty good, but it, there's some spots in the finish, and I, I, it's not hardening up. So anyway, well, it's 
more to come on that, but it is coming along. And um, so anyway, French polish, uh, which is basically shellac, you know, rubbed on, um, and then uh, then water base on the sides and the back. And so uh, I probably will put some finish on this uh, water base finish on this neck, clean it, uh, you know, clean it, and then puts a little bit of finish to hold this old, you know, uh, 100 and, you know, 60, 70 year old paint, what's left of it still on. And uh, so anyway, so that's the update on that. I did, I did want to, one of my, uh, one of my subscribers, one of my favorite subscribers asked me to show a little bit on a couple of things. And one of them is the, um, the, uh, Kind of go, go in and explaining how uh, how I patch the cracks with the cleats, and so uh, this is this is the little device. You know, we're using a guitar uh, part to repair a guitar, which is kind of nice. Uh, a tuning key from a guitar, and you put it on a uh, you know a I, I used a acrylic block, and then you drill a hole through, and it. What you do is you put the wire through. I, I explained this earlier, but but this is you can kind of see that you run the wire through the crack, then through the sound hole. Put your cleat and your bead so you can, you know, so you can get under there and uh, get, you know, so it can fit underneath. And you wind it up. Of course, it's already got the glue on the end, and when you pull it up, it's it glues tight to the um, underneath. And of course, you want the the grain. Uh, I you know. At a, at a skew from the grain of the top, so it makes it stronger. And then you, of course, you just crank this up and let it set. And what's what's nice is that if you have a crack that's uneven, by tightening this up, uh, depending on where you are on the guitar, it uh, it levels everything. And that's what happened with the back and the sides of this guitar. I was able to level them up, and uh, and then. Uh, Add, I think, added two or three cleats to each clack, each crack. <laughs> anyway, so this is what this is what I did. I made a couple of them. I have a smaller one here uh, that I just made. Uh, these are little cleat tools, and uh, but really invaluable for back, sides, tops. Anyway, so um, so that's uh, that's the update. Anyway, thank you so much uh, for watching, spending your time. Um, uh, more to come. I, I can't wait to string it up. I'm still working on full full scale plans, and uh, that'll be done uh, pretty soon. And then I can give the, this back. So anyway, thanks for joining me, uh, and uh, join me again. Thank you.